right now on Chronicle. The sparkle and magic of the holiday season on grand display in the land of play. The music is different, the colors are different, the lights are different, the decor is different. This time of the year is a big deal for Orlando's theme parks, but the final product takes months to make happen. Around July, they started getting trained and they go through a pretty extensive uh, rehearsal process. Tonight, we're taking you where few get to go, behind the scenes at five attractions. I can't wait to see what this looks like. Revealing. This is their home. The incredible work. And you wanted the behind the scenes secret. That goes into transforming every day. You have never seen a show like this at Walt Disney World. To holiday. Welcome to Chronicle, I'm Jim Payne. We've come to the time of year when holiday lights and decor fill our homes, our neighborhoods, and our communities. And that's especially true at the world-class attractions which call Central Florida home. The theme park spent pretty much the whole year getting ready for December and the magic this month brings. Tonight, we're peeling back the curtain to show you all that it takes to transform these famous places from everyday to holiday. Our first stop in this all-access experience is the place known for magic year-round. Walt Disney World at the holidays is a dazzling experience. Every park, hotel, and venue sees some sort of transformation. It happens through a mix of methodic year-round planning and then breakneck speed. Moving from Halloween to holiday in what feels like the wink of an eye. The happiest place to spend the holidays, Walt Disney World. The park's filled with holiday hustle and bustle for a very merry celebration with Mickey, Minnie, and the gang. But to get to this, there's a mad dash that takes place overnight, not seen by guests or TV crews until now. West two cameras have been given the rare chance to capture how Disney holiday magic happens. It is just after 2 a.m. November 1st, and Halloween memories are fading fast. In fact, the last park guest left just a little while ago, replaced by hundreds of workers transforming the Magic Kingdom from one holiday to the next. Time is short, and the task is great. From ground level in Main Street Square to the highest eaves of the halls and shops, change is underway. The symbols of one season yanked out of the ground, snatched from storefront windows and awnings, some even plucked from the highest perches. The same thing happening at Epcot, Hollywood Studios, and Animal Kingdom. The centerpiece for this changeover will go right here in the middle of the mayhem, a 65-foot tall Christmas tree. The holidays are 365 at Walt Disney World. Which happens to be stored here. This 15,000 square foot warehouse is the storage area for iconic Christmas trees for Disney parks and resorts. Disney Springs Marketplace Tree, Animal Kingdom, Contemporary Resort. Trees are stored in sections and assembled using a crane. This is the first section of the tree at Epcot. There are six altogether. The foliage doesn't go all the way back. We don't really need to. We just need to present the front. Each branch is put in by hand and then locked into place. There are hundreds of thousands of round ornaments, miles of ribbon. If they can dream it, they can do it. All of these props are custom made. You can't go buy a large piece of popcorn off the shelf. You actually have to make it. Smaller trees are crafted by the decorating team, which wires all the holiday decor to the tree. It stops items from becoming souvenirs and it's a lot safer. Even they have their favorites. This is a classic of Mickey and Minnie, and I'm a huge fan of popcorn. So this is the best one that really, really I like. So I remember when I'm very small, walking in Disney, the impression is amazing. I never forget that picture in my mind. And once it's on display, it's checked every day. We have teams that go out every single morning, and they have assigned areas to check on the decor to make sure it looks fresh. Speaking of fresh, this is the iconic gingerbread house in the lobby of the Grand Floridian Resort at Walt Disney World. It truly is an edible work of art and it smells so good. 
but this house doesn't just roll in and out of here. They actually make it from scratch, and we're about to show you how they do it. This is Disney pastry chef Christine Farmer, way up high, dusting the roof with sweet snow. She's the boss overseeing the Grand Floridian's gingerbread house, now in its 20th year. And it's a real house, constructed to building code. There's electrical, too. But the siding is what gets everyone salivating. 5,089 pieces of authentic Austrian gingerbread. Every single siding piece and shingle is backed in chocolate and then it's applied to the structure with royal icing. These characters are made out of white chocolate and hand-painted by our cast. It's really a, a gigantic piece of art, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. For more than two months, a team of pastry cooks spent 840 hours to mix, cut, bake, and construct the house and its components. Once on the hotel floor, it's five full days from start to finish. From bare frame to hand-painted cocoa butter artwork over the doors, exacting in its detail. Snowflakes with a dab of liquid white chocolate backing and a quick blast of icy cold to make it stick. If you don't take your time with it and press every piece on, they can start to slide. Oh, and can't that have is that. a nightmare. <laughs> can't have that. So, Santa Claus. Yes. I hear he weighs about 200 pounds. He's solid chocolate, yes. All hand painted. There are lots of tiny finishing touches that you might not notice unless you linger a little. Savor every section. One in particular is a fan favorite. There are hidden Mickeys around the house, 20 each. We add a new Mickey for every year that we're open. We have guests that book their vacations around this house being built. They want to watch, they want to sit in our lobby and sit in our dining hall to uh, see this happening. It's a lot of hard work for our cast, but they so much enjoy it. We are closing in on 4 a.m. Just a few flickers of Halloween left here on Main Street, but for the most part, Christmas is taking over. In fact, these two guys are installing a wreath on top of the lamppost right here, and they're actually bolting it into place. And then right behind them, the gift shop. Window getting a makeover, holiday themed of course. They even swapped out the glass there earlier tonight. And right down the road, Cinderella Castle, they're even testing out the lights right now. Forklifts on Main Street moving heavy things. Ladders and planters and people with wings. Big cherry pickers rolling here, rolling there. More last minute instructions, poinsettias use care. Workers on ladders plotting their next move, just two hours left and so very much to do. Wreaths adorned with citrus all the way down Main Street, ready to welcome everyone they meet. Plenty of lampposts adorned green and red, there's fluffing and turning while dreaming of bed. Bright lights and big noise, hard hats of yellow, it's getting quite late, no time to be mellow. Wreaths of garland roll in, jack-o'-lanterns out of sight, even Mickey Mouse bearing gifts, his bag stuffed quite tight. So away with the pumpkin decorations, carried off at a crate. A lot of hurry up and wait, but whatever, don't you run late. Up the ladder he goes, with a lantern in tow. Maybe there, maybe here, help me out, I don't know. And the orange and gold bunting, get away from here. A smile and a chuckle as the end draws near. From not so scary to very merry, We'll see you again next year. We're not done with Disney yet. Later, inside the making of the Candlelight Processional Choir. Can you say hello and happy holidays to everybody? It's an animal-filled experience at SeaWorld. From sea lions to camels, we're going backstage for their Christmas celebration. And still to come, a view of the Universal Holiday Parade. And it's all beautifully choreographed and timed out. It's, it's an amazing experience. Like you've never had before, Jason Guy takes our cameras onto the parade's path as he jumps into the job of minding a minion. Animals, ice skaters, and a whole lot of lights. 
SeaWorld's Christmas celebration really has something for everyone. Jasmine Bailey takes us on a guided tour of how the theme park brings the holiday season to life. Millions of dazzling lights, ice, incredible talent, animals. With all that, SeaWorld Orlando makes sure it's Christmas every day at the theme park, literally. December 31st, we start moving pieces out, right? Well, from that point on, we are rehabbing, we're, we're checking everything, we're getting a prep for next year. SeaWorld's Christmas celebration is just a month and a half long at the park, but to pull it off. Back here, you see a lot of work that is still ongoing. With Creative director Steve Welch says it's all hands on deck all year. And what's Christmas without trees? Crew members spend months fluffing them and making sure each light works. Some are massive, while others appear to float. It's over 100 uh, trees that go out on the lake. They're all lit and, uh, and they require a lot of work. Welch is talking about the park's iconic sea of trees. It's a forest that sparkles, switching colors and even designs all choreographed to the music and shows dotting SeaWorld's central lake. We were taken on a boat tour through the tree, something guests don't get to do. At night and up close, it was an incredible experience, but our boat captain was focused on any flickers, mapping and tracking how the trees synced up, looking for any issues before opening night. He leads a team of tech experts who've also GPS marked every tree, so if there's a glitch, it can be found and fixed fast. Back at the warehouse, it's a holiday hideaway chocked full of shiny bulbs, garland and crates, and candy canes wrapped with care. Amidst all those ornaments, we got the scoop on some Easter eggs for SeaWorld fans. Not many people know this, but a snow fluke is actually a killer whale silhouette. There's the tail, right? So the snow fluke is embedded in a lot of our different trees and decor items. <laughs> Also at the park, an outdoor ice rink. Real ice in Central Florida? But how? We've got basically a giant air conditioner in the back that is constantly keeping it cold under there. And it actually doesn't melt terribly. It's all very thick ice. So once it's kind of made and set, it doesn't really go anywhere. Insulated when it's not in use, the rink is treated just like any other. Mini Zamboni and all. Show rehearsals run after dark when the park is cleared out for weeks ahead of time. On the ice, former and current national level skaters, jeweled costumes, feathers, big hats. Try to tilt your hat somewhat the same way. Complete with real snow. Yes! Yes! Across the park, a wondrous night brings the nativity story to life. We got a sneak peek during rehearsals. The performers sing all your favorite carols, 30 to be exact. Oh, and you can't forget the life-size puppets and live animals. Good boy. Francis and Maddie are camels living at a local rescue. Nine months a year, they're retired until the stage calls. They love apple slices and our photographer. The pair were a shoe in for their walk on role. The audition process for the humans, however, was a lot harder. You are now all in consideration for the decorating, excited elf recruits. Weeks of auditions brought phenomenal talent from across the U.S. From what we saw, the caliber of the final cast doesn't disappoint. For Santa to visit, you must decorate! And it wouldn't be Christmas at SeaWorld without Clyde and Seymour. Their countdown to Christmas show is a classic. I met two of the stars during rehearsals. Try again and get that banner! In the show, they're racing against the clock before Santa's arrival. 
Trainers work year round with the mammals on new tricks, rewarding them with fish, jello, or a back scratch for a job well done. This is Clark, who, by the way, is nine feet long. He kept us quite entertained during our visit, but he's not the only star of the show. They see the two that are on stage, but they don't know a lot of the times that we have 11 different animals that actually partake in the show back there. And some of them know the entire show, and some of them are just learning it. Maybe they know one part, so they switch in and out. For the past 10 years, Brendan Curl has built a strong relationship with him and says the audience will be able to see that on stage. I see you look him directly in his eyes. Is that a technique? Uh, that is one of the things that we look for in our animals is attention. So he's really paying attention to me right now. He's looking at my eyes, I'm looking at him, and when I look at him, he knows that I'm paying attention to him, and I know that he's paying attention to me when he's looking at me. So many dedicated workers, so many months of planning, but at SeaWorld Orlando, there's just one vision. We want to be spectacular, but an even bigger part of it is to touch the heart and to resonate with our guests emotionally. Say happy holidays, everybody. If you don't mind, I'm going to turn you into a master model builder sure. for a few minutes. Next on Chronicle, Legoland's Christmas Bricktacular. Eric Burris heads into the master model builder workshop for a Lego lover's dream experience with some holiday flair. And later, bundling up for a breathtaking <laughs> behind the scenes experience filled with chisels and chainsaws. They're a distinct holiday gift for children of all ages, Legos. For years, these distinct tiny bricks have been the building blocks for the imaginations of countless children. With a theme park all their own just south of Orlando, Legoland goes all out for the holidays. We sent Eric Burris to find out what it takes to assemble all things holiday completely from Legos. Trees, ornaments, presents, elves, and even Santa himself. It's all at Legoland Florida, and it's all made out of Lego. We've been given special access to the Master Model Builders Workshop at Legoland Florida, where they design, build, and maintain every Lego item you see in the park. What you're looking at is a portion of our Lego stock. My tour guide today is Sam. He's in charge of the shop, and as you can imagine, his job just as cool as it sounds. We have anywhere from a half a million to a million different Lego pieces in this shop at any given time. We're surrounded by bins, bags, and boxes of every Lego piece, shape, and shade they make. Not everyone gets to see this room, let alone hang out in here. So as you can imagine, we wasted no time asking for all the behind-the-scenes scoop. Namely, how do you build all this stuff? We have two different ways. Um, our old style would actually be prototyping. So we would go to our shelves and we would get pieces that we think we would be able to so use. Grab it. And we would just start building. We would really? just trial and error. We would build a prototype. Wow. And then we would be able to build just a small version of something. And if we needed something, say, six foot tall, we would build it maybe a foot tall. But then after we had it complete and we were satisfied with it, we would be able to enlarge it. We would be able to just use simple math <laughs> that we promote to the kids all yeah. the time. And, and, and enlarge it, blow it up to the six foot that we need. That's old school building. New school, yup, you guessed it, right computers. Right. This is one of the programs that we use and it allows us to build a Lego model virtually, if right. you would. Right. Um, it's able to, we're able to plug in the pieces, the different Lego elements and, and get an idea of, of what the model is gonna look at in the final state. Sure. And this is pretty neat because we can build it actually three dimensional. Does it also say I'm gonna need 10,000 green Four, four blocks, 900 of the whites. I <laughs> wish it did. I wish really? it did. I wish it did. Yeah, computers, <laughs> there's, still, there's still a certain amount of creativity and work that our master model builders sure. need to do. Sam orders Lego by the tens of thousands to build out these designs, including that gigantic Christmas wreath we just saw on the computer. Yes. You're looking at actually 80,000 of the Duplo bricks right here. It took four of my master model builders about a week and a half to construct it from the ground to, the, to completion and then another week on top of that just for the initial design. Sam sure. let me in on this builder's secret. Anything this big in the park isn't solid Lego. There's a steel structure inside reinforcing the design and making it safe for the park guests. Okay. But smaller items 
That's a lot heavier than it looks. Are all Lego. When we visited, this wreath was tucked away. At 800 pounds, a forklift moves it into the park for guests to experience. On the back, we actually have hidden access panels where Lego will come out and reveal a steel structure that we can connect to and lift, lift it with a forklift. There's also a 30-foot Duplo Christmas tree. It's made of more than 270,000 bricks. Get this, a team of eight model builders spent six months creating it. It's about 20 different sections that we have to assemble one on top of another all the way until the top of the tree. And I had to ask about the weather. The sun and especially the heat does play a toll to a degree. Um, we use uh, actually a clear coating on a lot of the models that are out there. Uh, we call it a sunscreen essentially that we'll put on models out there that will help with the, with the UV rays from the sun and help slow down any kind of process of, of fading or anything. With a healthy dose of sunscreen, the Lego decor can last a few years, we're told, but items are constantly rehabbed and replaced. Back over in the workshop, I got to play a little. I mean, help. I got to help the model builders with holiday decor they're creating. We need probably a neighborhood of about 3,000 of these little candy canes, so I'm gonna have you just build one today. Easy peasy. Then the producers decided to test my Lego skills. The challenge, replicate one of the gifts, just like we saw under the wreath, all while they recorded. Now we're cooking, girl. Let's just say I quickly found out Lego is not child's play. And in the 23 minutes, 10 seconds it took me to whip up this gift, Master Model Builder David built six mini Santas. But the whole experience left me and photographer Jacob transformed and inspired to inject some of that Lego joy into our everyday job. This really does bring the winter wonderland to Central Florida. Artistry on ice as a holiday classic comes to life. We're taking you inside the making of a Christmas story. But next, it's a transformation sure to get you into the holiday spirit. What it takes to join the cast of Grinchmas at Universal Orlando. And I distinctly said no guests. You. Crossing paths with the Christmas curmudgeon himself. One on one with the Grinch. It's next. West 2's Behind the Scenes Park Pass has 30 minutes left. And what's ahead will not disappoint. <laughs> Who's up for a parade? This is awesome. See what it's like to walk the route as a member of the Universal team. This is amazing. I feel like a kid again. Plus, holidays on ice. This is all hand carved. It starts with a 300 pound block. We're putting on the parkas to show you this Arctic artistry up close. And casting the choir. The experience of being surrounded by all this glorious sound and the orchestra and the instruments and all these extraordinary singers. For the first time on television, go inside the training of Disney's Candlelight Processional Choir. It's kind of all melded over the years into one glorious experience. Every Day to Holiday continues right now. Welcome back to Chronicle. We continue to take you behind the scenes for all the spectacular holiday transformations at Orlando's theme parks. And for our next one, things got really hands-on for our own Jason Guy. At Universal Orlando, he didn't just check out how their Christmas shows come together, he became a part of them. Larger than life balloons on parade. The wizarding world aglow. Mary. Christmas, Cindy Lou. Oh, Merry Christmas, Mr. Grinch! And the happiest of who's welcome you. It's the Christmas celebration at Universal Orlando Resort, and I'm about to experience how some of it all comes together. Up First is one of the most recognizable holiday events. Universal's Holiday Parade featuring Macy's. The Universal Parade is designed to be just like its New York City counterpart. That means getting as many balloons as possible from there to here. We said, can't do the big ones, but we could do our medium, medium large size balloons and they would fit. And then we started designing some specifically to be able to be used in both parades. That's right, there are balloons that have walked Sixth Avenue on parade here in Orlando. This year, it's the Nutcracker. It made its way to Orlando after Thanksgiving. But unlike New York, these balloons stay inflated for their entire seven week run. 
John Piper, who runs the New York Parade, explains how that's accomplished. They literally built a structure to house the balloons, to keep them inflated, sleeping overnight, with a very big door. <laughs> and one of the challenges is to make sure that the balloon can just fit out the door and then come around to be in the parade and then go back and just fit in the door to go back to sleep for the night. But each day we have a team from New York that's here working in tandem with Universal through the entire parade to add more helium as needed every day, take care of the balloons, make sure they're all right, help the balloon pilots train them, the handlers, to get them in and out and fly them safely. Balloon handlers are Universal employees. Except this year, on opening night, they let me sub in, which means a crash course in all things parade. Everybody has to work cohesively to make this work. Vanessa Heaton is a balloon handler at Universal. She's so good, she's worked in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in New York three times. Make sure you do what your pilot says. Um, the pilot is the one who's going to know what the balloon's going to do, depending on what instructions he gives you. The pilot is the person in front of all the handlers telling them what to do. If you have to hold the and my pilot for this training is Daniel. He has about 20 minutes to show me the ropes, literally. So this is called a bone. The bone. Yep. Okay. Handlers hold it diagonally to safely raise or lower the balloon. So Daniel, what do I need to do? Pilots use hand signals. Oh, I did wrong. One. Okay. To communicate with handlers. Two. Did I go twice? You went twice. I went twice. Okay. No, seriously, this is good practice. Okay. <laughs> Let's try again, Daniel. Start it over. Okay. One. I tried to follow along. One, two. But. I don't know what that meant. One down. But did I didn't see the one. Did I miss that? Okay. I'm way more nervous now about my performance tonight. Okay. Then it was showtime. The nerves were there as we walked from the backstage area and onto the parade route. As I smiled to the crowd and they smiled back, my nerves calmed down. This is awesome. I kept my eyes on my pilot. He's easy to spot in the white jumpsuit with a green hat and orange gloves. Aside from a few windy moments, we kept Menny and Bob on course. This was a blast. Let me tell you, the balloon's a lot heavier than you might think. You've got to hold it down. Our pilot did say when we were done today that I was really good, so I might have a future in this. It was truly a magical experience. And speaking of magic, the parade route in Universal Studios is just steps from Diagon Alley, all ready for Christmas and waiting for Harry Potter fans. Straight from the beloved books and movies, Universal works with Harry Potter creator J.K. Rowling's team to perfect every detail. Including the magic that comes to life on Hogwarts Castle. Projection mapping technology wraps the Hogwarts school in holiday moments inspired by the Harry Potter series. The projection is so precise, you'll think the castle really is under a spell. And immersed is the theme for my final experience at Universal Orlando. It doesn't get more behind the scenes than this. You're about to witness my transformation into a Who from Grinchmas, a live stage adaptation of the Dr. Seuss classic. So first, let's get a costume here. All right, oh, this is it. I chose more of an elf look with bright Christmas colors, and the whimsical attire isn't complete without a hat. Guess who? The costume was the easy part. The makeup is a whole other story. Angela, am I gonna wear one of those cool noses? You are, this is gonna be you. It's gonna be applied to your face and you are gonna turn into a who. The key is finding the perfect nose. We want it to fit snugly, but we also want it to be comfortable for you to be able to breathe, to be able does to- Does it have air holes? It does. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's got small little nostril holes right okay. here. Um, and we want you to be able to emote. Special glue keeps the prosthetic in place. Lots of glue. Can you open your mouth and tilt your head back just a little bit? After it's secure and the edges are smooth, a little powder. Because you can't reuse it after you rip it off, right? No, once it's done, it goes in the garbage and they get a fresh new one the next day. Angela begins painting the latex piece to match my skin color, layer upon layer. Each day, a team of makeup artists create a gaggle of Grinches and a whole lot of Who's. To pull off Grinchmas, um, there are eight Who artists and there are four Grinch, Grinch artists. So there's 12 a day. And then there's two beauty makeup artists. So yeah, 
14 people a day. We have a couple hours to do everything, so we have to try to make it go as fast as possible. We have everything timed out, kind of down to a science. Yeah. Mixing colors, getting an exact match, a little splattering and smoothing helps match natural skin color variations. I have to give you a little rosy nose. Oh yeah, yeah. Since you live on a snowflake where it's cold. It took about an hour to complete the look. About half of that was just applying the nose. What? <laughs> that is crazy. Finally, I got to see myself as a Who. So, you know, of course, the Grinch steals Christmas. Once in full makeup, it's time to visit Whoville on the set of Grinchmas. This show has a very, very special place in my heart. Robin Kelly's in charge of this production, along with the parade, but it wasn't too long ago that she was a Who, too. And I played Cindy Lou's mother, Betty Lou Who. For the past five years, Robin's been putting her passion into directing Grinchmas. This year, the show has some new elements. One of the things I notice is over here, we got the Grinch's lair. Yes. What is going what? on here? Oh, boy. I distinctly said no guests. You. What's your business here, pal? This was it. My big chance for an exclusive with the, the, the Grinch. Are you excited about all the folks coming out to see you? Excited? <laughs> They're the lucky ones, let me tell you. I'm the one that's going to be treating them. Mm-hmm. Yep. Merry Christmas, everybody. From me to you. Are we through here? Can I go? Lots of things to do. Yep. Sorry to bother you. Uh-huh. Now that that was over. Happy holidays! Welcome! I was ready to try out my hooness on the park guests. Robin prepped me a little. 364 days a year, they're getting ready for Christmas. They live for Christmas, so they're always in a rush. Yeah. What was your so, voice? Well, when I when I performed as uh, Betty Lou, who uh, I was very, oh, Cindy Lou, Cindy oh, Lou, where like are that. you? Yeah. That kind of thing. Do the okay. guys even go up into the higher of registry? Of so you might want to take that a little more cool. A little more cool, but yeah. it's still got to be cartoon. There you, you go. Do you like her? That's perfect. <laughs> I think you're ready. Happy holidays! I spent a few minutes strolling through Seuss Landing. High five! Greeting guests and posing for photos. Happy holidays! Oh, hi! Hi, guys! Hi. Just before it was time to head backstage, I met Timmy from Wisconsin. This bump! Yeah! He was a little unsure about meeting a who at first. Can you give me a hug? But quickly warmed up enough hi. to give oh. a hug. Do you like the hat? Look at this! Look at that! Snag my hat! Ah. <laughs> and a little reminder of what it's really all about. It's one of Disney's most iconic holiday happenings, the Candlelight Processional. We're taking you behind the music for a peek into how this group tunes up each year for the high-profile performance. But next, the Pink Monster, a Red Ryder BB gun and one fancy looking lamp. How a Christmas story has been recreated entirely in ice and only in Central Florida. There's just something about a chill in the air that makes things feel more festive, especially here in Florida. Maybe that's why our next attraction is such a hit. Each year, the Gaylord Palms Resort takes a holiday classic and recreates it in ice. This year, it's a Christmas story, one of my favorites. Scenes from the film, now frozen works of art and on display. And Meredith McDonough was in awe, finding out what goes into building this cool experience. It's a wonderland of ice in Orlando. For weeks, we went behind the scenes to see how ice at the Gaylord Palms goes from concept to cold creation. If you don't have all of this winter gear, that's okay. Parkas are provided. I was not prepared for what I was about to see. <laughs> oh my gosh. Christmas story. This is my first time seeing ice. This is incredible. <laughs> And it's cold. Hey, Nico, how are you? Good, how are you today? Oh my goodness, this has really taken my breath away. I've never been here, I've never seen this. Well, we're happy to have you. We had extraordinary access to this Arctic construction zone. Nico Nicolau is my tour guide for this behind the scenes look at this year's theme, A Christmas Story. 
It starts by building a building that can house 2 million pounds of ice that fends off the Florida sunshine. The attraction is housed in a tent behind Gaylord Palms, and it takes 40 days to prep before a single block of ice enters. And then they'll put up the walls, and then they go ahead and put uh, the insulation. Then it's time for the freeze. Massive chillers are cranked up to start the process. We go about five days at 55 degrees and that's to really pull the humidity out of the tent so there's no moisture in here, and then it drops down to nine degrees. Yep, nine degrees. Keeping an attraction at nine degrees uh, in Central Florida is a feat in itself, uh, so that's, that's an engineering marvel in my opinion. The entire attraction is a mix of engineering, architecture, science, math, and insane talent. Talent provided by a special group of artisans. They might look like any group of tourists in Orlando, but these men have a particular set of skills. Forged, honed, etched in the ancient city of Harbin, China. Known as the Ice City, Harbin is home to some of the most dazzling ice designs in the world. And once a year, these master craftsmen bring their skills here to Central Florida. Every sculpture, you know, is like his child. You know, to be able to carve something like this, you know, it fills him, you know, with a lot of pride, and he's proud to uh, share it with uh, uh, the people here in the United States. We spoke with artisan art director Chung Shu Hong via translator. He explained the team worked for six months before arriving, studying and planning how to recreate such memorable characters like Ralphie and the pink monster. It takes that long because every finished piece starts out as a 300 pound block of ice. There are no molds, no computers or machines. Everything is created from pure water. They saw, scrape and carve until the iconic figures come to life. All of it is done in 40 days. They have their plans, they have their architectural drawings that they're building everything up from the slope of the slide all the way down to the height of the walls to make sure that it all comes together. Over the span of our visits, we were able to see that engineering take shape in the form of that memorable mall Santa scene from a Christmas story. The ice team designed a larger than life slide for adults and kids to enjoy after seeing Santa. Measuring, moving, molding the pieces to defy gravity. Something else I'd never known? Combining colorful ice with the clear kind is really hard. This year uh, presented a special challenge in combining the color and the clear ice, the two elements. So the difficulty levels in creating this year's show is uh, significantly more so than previous years. It may only be food coloring, but depending on the temperature and the use, the lighting in here, it all factors into the actual pigmentation of the, the colors of the ice. All the blocks are shipped in already dyed the correct color to maintain accuracy, and the artisans are equally as detailed. Ice sculpting is a very niche art form, so the tools that they use are all uh, crafted by themselves, actually. Uh, and uh, because ice sculpting is a reductive art form where you're only chipping away, uh, so every cut, uh, all the work has to be very, very precise. Creating lifelike faces is considered one of the most difficult of tasks in any art form. One wrong scrape, one too forceful tap, and weeks of work could be lost. That's part of what the artists love about their work. He loves the process, the entire process of it. Every step has uh, its own joys to take in care of, but uh, holistically, he just loves the entire process. Just before ICE opened to the public, I got to see the final finished exhibit. And since it's family friendly, I brought a date. We're going inside. It's going to be cold. All bundled up, Tommy was ready for ICE. Tommy doesn't quite yet appreciate a Christmas story, but this almost four-year-old was digging all the snow and ice. Then we saw it, the magnificent slide. That's a slide! That's a slide! At first, Tommy was hesitant. Do it again, I think you're gonna love it, okay? Okay. You're on your deck. That didn't last long. I saw ya! Tommy's energy was contagious. Awesome! So I got in on the fun. Again. 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 Can you do it one more time?
after one final slide, <laughs> it was time to say our last goodbye. Bye! I love those slides! I'm gonna go again! Volunteering their voices for Holiday Harmony. For the first time on television, meet the members of Disney's Candlelight Processional Choir and hear how they prepare for the performance of a lifetime. Finally, Walt Disney's vision for what a Christmas celebration is really all about. 60 years ago, he created a magical melding of music and melody and called it the Candlelight Processional. It's evolved into a cheery celebration of compassion, community, and the birth of Christ. Before this can happen, There is a whole lot of this. Oh, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with great joy. Nightly rehearsals of the cast choir for the Candlelight Processional. Oh, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with great joy. These are the people in the golden green choir robes right in the middle of the stage carrying candles and lighting up the Christmas tree. They are not professional singers. They are Disney employees. We kind of coach them to be the Christmas lights, the bulbs of the Christmas tree with their face. So we want them to be as visual as possible and still execute the music the way we've taught them. Dirk Donahue is the cast choir rehearsal conductor. Next note. This Kissimmee native started singing in this choir in 1985. Are you ever satisfied? I guess not. <laughs> Which may be a bad thing, but in this, in this case, we, it's a good thing, I think. We want to strive for, to push them to their limits and maybe even go farther. The cast choir starts rehearsing in September all the way up to opening night. Every year, there are a lot of new faces in this group. Not one of them paid, every one a volunteer, every one a Disney employee. This is my 17th year. This is my fifth year. This is my second year, so um, I'm very excited to be back. This will be my 24th season. We're all family here. What are you looking for in a cast choir member? Dedication and someone that enjoys singing and can blend their voice with other people. We have a lot of enthusiasm here and that counts a lot. <laughs> Forrest Baruth is the show director at Walt Disney World. He's been a Disney employee for 47 years. And what about the talent level in the room? Very high. They are really excellent. <laughs> Makes your job easier? Yes, you know, and enjoyable to hear as well. Laura Butler hits the high notes in the cast choir. This is her fifth year. Her father, Jim, is across the room hitting low notes, now in his second year. Jim's son also sings in the choir, all part of a musical family. My first performance, I just had chills the whole time. People in this choir are from all different roles across the company. Um, so I'm usually making some new friends every rehearsal. There are custodial people. There, there are cooks. There are bus drivers. You know, there are corporate office people. There are execs that have been here you know, 15, 20 years. It, it amazes me that they can take those people and mold them into what you see on the stage. Michelle Marshall has been singing for two decades in the cast choir. Kevin Marshall for 25 years. We have lots of wonderful memories and friends and we feel it's the truly the best show on property. In 2002, as they were singing across the choir from one another, sparks flew. They dated for a year. We had the, the costuming people come out, everybody was standing around, and I said, oh, this is so sweet, everybody's come to see us for the last show. show. And I could hear chuckling behind me, I thought, why are they laughing at me? And all of a sudden, down on one knee, and I thought, oh, no, this is happening. <laughs> she said, make and it special. I did say, well, yes, <laughs> yes I did. You did. It was perfect. He couldn't have picked a more magical way to do it. Uh -huh. So we got to share it with all our friends. Yes. <laughs>
So. Kevin and Michelle are now retired from Walt Disney World, but they are allowed to audition for the cast choir. Everyone here earns their place. Who's the better singer? Ooh. More than 1,200 tried out to be part of the cast choir. 824 were selected. Each must take part in a minimum of 15 hours of rehearsal time. There are performances for 39 straight nights, a total of 117 shows. How do you craft the sound to get it to the point where you want it to be? I think it's a, it's a perpetual thing. We're always trying. We're always finding new things, and specifically because there's so many of them. Well, that was a, a maxim of, of Walt's. He always said, you got to keep making it better. 400 people on stage, including singers from church and school choirs, along with a 50-piece orchestra and a celebrity narrator, all with one noble goal. I want them to get why we're there. It's the story of Christ. It's the birth of Christ. This has been just a peek behind the scenes and all that goes into making the holidays extra special at our theme parks. For more rarely seen footage and stories, go to WESH.com and click on the Chronicle tab. From all of us at WESH 2, happy holidays.